Tonight marks three years since the third police precinct in Minneapolis was set on fire in the wake of George Floyd's murder. The city is still trying to figure out what to do with that building. Renee Cooper is live at Minnehaha Avenue and Lake Street. And Renee, you spoke to some neighbors in the area today. Brett, today feelings are mixed about the future of this building and policing within the third precinct. To the neighbors who lived here on this night in 2020, many who still live here today, they remember the heat, the flashbangs, and the palpable anger. And to them, it was unlike anything they'd ever experienced. The organizers all calling for calm, and I knew that things weren't going to be calm. I could feel it. I remember a lot of stuff. I remember it burning down. I burned up in here when it started here. It was very bad, very bad. Three years ago Sunday, three days after George Floyd was killed, protests culminated outside the precinct that, at the time, was the workplace of the man later convicted of his murder. That night, it went up in flames. You could see the fires. You could see, you hear the bombs going off. That's what the sound of flashbangs. Rubber bullets and tear gas canisters hitting the ground sounded like to Joseph Forche. At one day I woke up and there was fires all around me. It was a very intense time. Do you remember how you were feeling during all that? I was hot. I was pissed off. They ain't protecting us, and I'll tell you that. That night burned into neighbors' memories for good. It was a spark. It was a trigger. It was a, something that made us pay attention. <laughs> There's documented evidence about what happened in that building. Um, and it's grotesque. It's not one incident, and it happened for decades. Sam Gould co-founded a neighborhood print shop back in 2020. Basically to create a newsroom for neighbors. Documenting what happened here. It's very shocking. All in all, the Minneapolis Fire Department reported responding to roughly 30 fires overnight, 16 of them structure fires, taking local businesses down with them. The most crushing moment for me was the second round of burnings. The first round of burnings were clearly opportunistic. The second round, they were intentional and thorough in a way that was soul crushing. I mean, I haven't experienced anything like that in my life and I don't want to experience it again. But that's why uh, neighbors have to work with one another and the city has to listen because it will happen again if we repeat the same mistakes. Gold tells me over the next year, Confluence Studio will be hosting a series of community conversations about the future of the building and about policing or other forms of security in the area. This comes after the city closed an April survey asking Minneapolis if they want to rebuild the precinct here or a new, more expensive one down the street. And two community groups said they'll reject either option that the city ultimately lands on. For more on that ongoing story, head on over to KSTP.com. For now, live in Minneapolis, Renee Cooper, 5 Eyewitness News. Renee, thank you.